Only the informed can make the right decisions. It is becoming obvious that there must be a lot of money going into it because if everybody's a terrorist or potential terrorist, you go to the airports and everyone's treated as such in order to gain more business from the business of terrorists. I'm not a fan of the way in which the American police uh, have become more and more militarized over the past few years. I'm not a fan at all of many instances of what can clearly only be called police brutality. Gun ownership is very vital because the founders believed that uh, the citizenry should always be armed in case they had an authoritarian government that they had to rein in. One example of a police state is what we saw recently after the marathon bombing in Boston. Close your window, go back inside your house, answer the door. They were looking for a single suspect, presumably armed and dangerous. They put, according to some estimates, 10,000 armed, essentially paramilitary uh, police into the streets of Watertown. The excuse that they used, that there was an armed and dangerous subject loose somewhere in the Watertown area, the environs of Boston, could be used in essentially every major city in this country almost every day of the year. But would such a call be legal? Would it be legal under the highest law of the land, the U.S. Constitution? It's only you as the militia, Article 1, Section 8 of Congress having the authority to call forth the militia to, one, execute the laws of the Union, two, to repel invasions, and three, to suppress insurrections. It's you as the people who are the military force of the country. What would cause the globalists to spend trillions on the Department of Homeland Security and impose laws like the Patriot Act and the NDAA? It was a socialist honest enough to realize that the logical implication of big government is big tyranny. And the way we're going to get out of it is to walk back all of these tyrannical powers that we've allowed to operate uh, in the hands of government. Every time a government debases the currency, whether coin clipping as the Roman Empire did, fractional reserve as the British Empire did, or printing fiat currency as the U.S. Empire now does, the economy eventually crashes. Our founding fathers uh, intended that our system of currency in this country or, uh, was by weights and measures and gold and silver. And fiat currency is only created because the government says it has value. Given such a crash, what will the power elite do? Simple. They will do what every power elite has done throughout history. Call for martial law. What's the point of worrying about being attacked from some totalitarian system across the ocean if in order to do so, we have to build a totalitarian system right here at home. Holy shit. That's unnecessary. Is this the America we all know and love? Is this what freedom and democracy have come to? We don't accept the principles of liberty that is our main problem. The power elite is getting ready for a war. Not a war on drugs or even a war on terror, but a war to protect themselves. This government today is wildly outside its bounds. And the evidence is 
in our newspaper headlines, it's on our television screens, it's wherever we look. Yes, they are the ones in terror. In terror because of their own deeds. We owe our children the freedom and the liberty that we were bequeathed. And any time a generation comes along and decides that it's not willing to pay that price, well, what we are doing then is ensuring the enslavement of our children. From the director of Fiat Empire and the author of Sword and Sovereignty, Matrix Entertainment, in association with Oath Keepers, is proud to present Midnight Ride, when rogue politicians call for martial law. Give me liberty or give me death. That's what our rallying cry has to be.